fourth grade. Welcome to week 17 of our number talk series. Uh, we're focused on the multiplication strategy, doubling and halving. Before I get started with the strategy, it's a great strategy, but it's not a strategy that works with every set of numbers. There's some sets of numbers that just don't work nearly as efficiently as this. You'll fall back and either use partial products, the strategy used last week, or there's a new strategy you'll be using learning in two weeks, which is breaking factors into smaller factors. Um, but doubling and halving works really well with certain numbers. Before we start this, though, I want to make sure it's clear. Um, I put three challenge problems on this week learning op, and they are designed to be challenging. Okay, if, if you spend 20 to 25 minutes on those three problems and you're like, you know what, I'm stumped, that's okay. Take a deep breath. The focus is get the actual learning opportunity complete for the doubling and halving strategy. The learning op um, is focused on that. The challenge yourself to go above and beyond is just that. I just want to see what kids can do, and they're more open-ended problems. They're not related to next necessarily the strategies. Just want to make sure that's clear. Okay, so let's get started. So the first one says 7 times 8, 7 groups of 8. Well, the nice thing is with 7 groups of 8, we thought about doubling and halving. Well, if I want to half 7, look at what happens. That's three and a half. If I double eight, that's sixteen. If I half three and a half, that's one and three fourths. If I double sixteen, that's thirty two. Well, hopefully you realize like that may not be a very good strategy. So if I want to go and say, well, wait a second, well let's look at seven times eight and say, well, I don't want to I know with an odd number I'm not gonna half it, that puts me with a fraction. I'm gonna double the odd number. So that's 14. I'm going to half 8. That's 4. I'm going to double 14. That's 28. I'm going to half 4. That's 2. I'm going to double 28. That's 56. I'm going to half. So we know that 7 times 8 is 56. Or we also know that 3 and a half times 16 is also 56. We also know 1 and 3 fourths times 32 is also 56. We know 28 times 2 is also 56. We also know 14 times 4 is 56. But the answer to our problem would be 56. Kind of like here. We have 24 times 16. Let's see which one's more efficient. Well, let's half 24. So that's 12. Let's double 16. That's 32. Let's half 12. That's 6. Let's double 32. That's 64. Let's half 6. That's 3. Let's double 64. That's 128. Let's half 3. That's 1.5. Let's double 128, that's 256. Well, at least there, when we say 1 and a half times 256, we could take 256, but it's half of 256, 128. So if we actually added those two numbers together, think about what I just did, 1 times 256, half of 256 is 128. If we add those two together, we'd be left with what? Well, if we think about this, we have 8 plus 6, that's our 14, right? 7, 8, 384. Or we could have gone the other way and said, well, we have 120 plus 250, that's 370, plus 8 plus 6 is 14, that's 384. Okay? Let's see something. Let's go on the other side. And let's take 24. Sorry, guys, I don't know why that 24 didn't come out. Times 16. And let's not... Let's actually double 24. 24 is 48. Half of 16 is 8. Double 40 is 96. Half is 4. 96 doubled is 192. And that's 2. 192 doubled is 384 ones. Oh, wait a second. We got the same solution. So again, there was an efficient way to do it and a not so efficient way. Let's look at 18 times 25. Again, we could we could take half of 18 is 9 and then 25 doubled is 50. Well the nice thing with this doubling halving, well what's 9 times 5? 45. So we don't even have to go any further. We know 9 50s is 450. Right? Because if we kept going, what's half of 9? 4 and a half so we have 4 and a half times 100. Well, what's 4 times 100? 400. What's half 150? That would also be 450. 
Now let's come to the other side. What if we took the 18 and the 25 and we went the other way? Well, 18 doubled is 36. Half of 25 is 12 and a half. 36 doubled is 72. 12 and a half would be 6 and 1 fourth. And then this would be 144. This would be 3 and 1 eighth. So we quickly realized, like, hmm, you know what? It's nice to know that all of those numbers equal 450, but that's not the most efficient way. So we find that for this situation, the double and halving, we would just go one rotation. Half of 18 is 9. 25 doubles 50. 9 fifties is 450. So again, it's a matter of figuring out which number do you want to double, which number do you want to half, so it can work for you in the most efficient way. Okay? Thank you very much, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys apply this strategy.